What is up? It is your host, Endo Kane. I'm here live and direct to let you know that I watched Raw yesterday. So let's get to it. Let's break it down. Raw kicks off with a bang. And I mean a real big bang because Rhea comes out with a sling on that arm. Uh, oh no. Which means that all the rumors are true. She had to vacate the title. Says she's going to be out for months on the bench as she called it. Which to be honest with you, I don't know. I didn't really like that. You know what I mean? Because on the bench means you can possibly play. Your ass gonna be sitting at home, period. Look, I like Rhea. I feel like she's a great champ. I feel like she had a great reign. You know, the crowd was really into it. She's one of the most open motherfuckers on Raw. But hey, if you can't compete, you can't compete. Just don't tell that to Roman. So the crowd chants bullshit, 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 bullshit. Rhea says she will be back for blood against Liv. Then Liv appears. She go out there, it's a lot of officials getting in between them. They didn't make physical contact. However, Liv did have a Liv Morgan Revenge to a shirt on. That kind of explains maybe that was intentional. Maybe we seeing a edgier side of Liv Morgan that we don't always see. So then, yeah, Rhea does her thing, her tough girl thing, knocks out a few bodyguards, knocks out a few security guards and officials, which should be a fine if she wasn't already gonna be sitting on the bench. So hey, look, I get it. It sucks, but when it's time, it's time. You gotta lay the title down. People gotta compete. People gotta fight for chances to become champions. It is what it is. It sucks, but it is what it is. Boy, Sheamus, the Celtic Gloria! Sheamus returns. And man, he had a really good match with Ivar. Ivar, who I feel, even though Eric's been on the bench, Ivar's really come into himself uh, on the Monday Night Raw roster. Uh, hasn't really been winning a lot, been kicking since I was ass in the past. But uh, I feel like his character's really coming around, getting into himself with the addition of our highlight and he can only, you know, go up, man. I feel like, hey, every roster needs a motherfucker like that, and they got one in Ivar. So he's at a match, so towards the end of the match, Sheamus exposes his knee, and which I haven't seen him do, and does what he's calling now the kneecap, which is what Michael Cole called it. I don't know. I, every, you gotta reinvent yourself, I guess. Bro kick, one, two, three. That's it for Ivar. Sheamus gets a big win back on Monday Night Raw. Hey man, it's pretty good to me. After that, we get a Sami Zayn IC package hyping up the main event tonight. Boy, 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 was it a main event? I ain't gonna get into Triple H appears. And Triple H says we need two sets of tag titles since that main year we had two tag champion winners. So he calls out Awesome Troop. You know what I mean? Brings him down to the ring. Troop is, I don't know, going crazy, calling trips. Champa, I mean, Champa trips, I, I don't know, man, he's freaking loose. The crowd showered Awesome Troop with praise. You know, you deserve it. So, Triple H and Adam Pearce unveiled the new tag team titles, which they're calling the World Tag Team Championships. Honestly, I was a little disappointed. I mean, they kind of just look like Damian Priest World Heavyweight Championship. I mean, it just kind of looks like a replica, you know what I mean? Like, I don't really, I don't know. I feel like we should have a little bit more originality to championship uh, uh, design. I feel like a little bit more originality sets them apart and kind of makes the championship its own, you know? Hate to say this, but kind of like how they did back in the day. So Miz tells Truth, look, we got these new tag titles. It is time to elevate the tag division on Raw, and it starts with us. You're so right. I love it. Love tag team wrestling. It is about time we take it serious. So Pierce announces a triple threat tag match for the number one contender for Awesome Troops World Tag Team Champions. And here is your competitors, DIY, the Creed Bros, and I'm pretty sure you guessed it, the New Day. Also, go back. If you're into those vignettes, that was a, when the New Day was coming out, that was a small, I don't even want to call it small, it was like a vignette kind of like a QR code that like pop, pop, popped up on the screen like that. Go back, that's very, very, if you're into those QR codes and you're into, you know, following how deep the rabbit hole goes, I highly suggest you go back and check out the video and scan that QR code, see what you can dig up, because I'm kind of lazy and I'm not going back to do that. So the match itself was pretty good. Um, they were doing it in a different format than what Vinny Mac would do, which is two guys starting the ring and all the other tag teams around the ring 
then tag one of the other ones, you know. Yeah, that's fucking stupid to me. They were doing it to where it's an actual triple threat with three teams and three guys in the ring and you tag your uh, uh, partner. I feel like that, 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 that hits more. That just hits better. The Creed Bros started off hot. They have been working their way up the roster, sometimes working their way down the roster. So we get to the finish. Oh, New Day goes for a suicide dive. Suplex on the Creed Bros. Bionic elbow from Meet in the Middle from DIY. I felt like they were gonna win at Mania, but I was completely wrong. They show like a vignette of like what happened at Mania and McIntyre losing the title to Priest. And you know, because at the hands of CM Punk and cuts to McIntyre laughing in the back and he gets mad instantly and destroys the monitor as CM Punk chants rain out in the arena. It was just kind of I felt bad for him, man. Like he's he's the guy that took us through the COVID era. Be on the lookout, reports are coming out now that he's got like six to eight weeks left on his contract on the deal, and they haven't signed an extension yet. That's kind of scary, because I don't know, he's one of my favorite superstars, and it's just be kind of weird to see him wrestling anywhere else. So. We get another tag match after that. Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae versus Ivy Nile and Maxine Dupree. It was okay, it had its moments. It was a little bit sloppy, a little bit clunky. Candice LeRae has been trying to push Indy Hartwell towards the heel side of things bring out her inner heel. I'm all for it. Just whatever you do, don't give Candice LeRae a mic. She's terrible. I mean, now from what I've seen in that match, really, really, really good technically. Like she's a really good, like she's got all the basics down. All the tools for success, brother. So Indy's kind of coming around now to the heel side of things. Her heel persona, you know what I mean? She's coming around and she, so yeah, Indy Hartwell and Candice LeRae pick up the win. Uh, I'm kind of tired of them. Uh, I was never a big fan of Candice LeRae, but you know, nobody gave a fuck when they were faces. Why not try to be you? All right, so then we get a Damian Priest champ package. Um, I think Priest is gonna be a pretty good champion for a lot of people. Oh, that's CM Punk's title, whatever. Then we cut back to the Judgment Day and they love Treehouse Hideout, wherever the fuck they are. Damian says Dom and JD to go handle Andrade. Then Damien says Finn needs to handle Jay tonight. Then we get a Chad Gable package of him earlier in the day working out in the ring. Gable says everything he does is for his family. Which look, I like Chad Gable's character. I really do. You know what I mean? He said he's really gonna go out there and give it his all. He said he saw something when he was training Sami Zayn, and that's what's gonna be Sami's downfall. So hey, we'll see. He praises Sami for winning that mania, but says tonight he will expose Sami Zayn. Keep an eye out for that one. Now it's time for Andrade versus Dom. Andrade comes out. People are kind of coming around to the idea of him. You know, this is his what second trip around the company. You know what I mean? It's, it's not exactly a new thing, but he is new and he's back, so it's something good to keep an eye on. That boy, Dirty Dom, has so much goddamn heat. So much heat. Oh my goodness, it's ridiculous, man. They truly, truly hate him. They don't want to let him get a word out. And for all the people that were saying that all those boobs were piped in, fuck off. Because they're not. They're not piped in at all. That's 100% real. And you guys need to accept it. Damn, people hate Dom. This guy heat. That's the fucking business. So let's get to some of the match. Reverse three amigos. To the face, Dom hit the Canadian Destroyer on the apron, which looks amazing. Canadian Destroyer in Canada, ha <laughs> ha! So he sets up Andrade for the 619, Andrade reverses the 619. He hits the message and gets the win. But then he gets jumped at the end by Diamond JD, of course. But then your boy Ricochet makes the save. I'm really a big fan of Ricochet, man. I feel like the stuff he does is Remarkable man, I'm really a big fan of him. Then we cut to the back, we're talking to Jay Uso. Jay Uso responds to the Tamatonga attack on SmackDown and says that is typical bloodline behavior. But he says he will defeat Ben Ballard tonight because he is here and his focus is here on Monday Night Raw. I love it. Then we get another tag match, ironically, another women's tag match. We're doing too many tag matches on this row. It was K Nick and Triangle. It was Katie Katana. Wait, is it Katana or Katrana? 
Katana. Kane Katana, Katana, shit. Kane and Katana versus Piper and Chelsea. One thing I will point out from this match, uh, Kane and Katana are really, really, really in sync as a tag team. Maybe that got to do with their past, you know what I mean? Their past tag team experience in NXT. But they're really, really, really in sync. Piper and Chelsea went clean because, of course, uh, yeah, they're the ones being pushed right now. Not too much to really talk about on that one. We then cut back to backstage and we're talking to Liv Morgan about the attack that she had on Rhea and how she felt about Rhea coming out there and relinquishing the title. They asked her, is this the end of your revenge tour? And Liv says no, and she don't feel sorry for Rhea because nobody felt sorry for when Rhea did the same thing to her. An eye for an eye, perhaps? Liv going heel? Hey, I love it. Watch me, goddammit. I'm, I'm, I'm here for Then yeah, we get... WWE Heavyweight Champion Cody Rhodes in the ring. He goes out there, so what do you want to talk about? Out there, when he says it in French, you know, because they're in whatever, I don't know. That's typical Cody Rhodes. But I mean, it's good though, you know, connecting with the crowd, whatever. Thanks Adam Pierce for letting him appear on Raw, even though he's technically a SmackDown superstar, even though the draft hasn't happened yet. I don't know why I keep doing this. He says, maybe it's over. It's time to look ahead. To backlash. He sends out a stern message to the rock and says, If I will bleed, you'll bleed with me. And I really like it when Cody do stuff like that, man. Says stuff like that that really resonates with you. You know what I mean? A lot of people go out there and talk on the stick and just blah blah blah, hype their damn self up. But he really, he really, really gives a little more, man, in those promos. You know, I feel like he's ripping a piece of his heart out and giving it to you. You know what I mean? Live on TV at 87 Central Monday Night Raw. So I, 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 I like Cody's chance so far. So far, so good. He calls out Jay Uso. He tells Jay Uso, I'm going to have your back tonight the same way you had my back. You know, all those times. And Jay, being the baby face that he is, says, Thank you, brother, but I decline. I got to do this on my own. Basically, the Yeet Master saying, I gotta go yeet somebody up tonight on my goddamn own. Yeet! Backstage, we got Nia Jax talking a lot of shit again, saying that even if she gets drafted, any women's division that she's up against is hers for sure. I don't know. I, I like Nia, but I just feel like she's an obstacle for people to overcome these days. I could be wrong, you know what I mean? But until I see her do one of these with the title in her hand, I won't believe it. All right, so we cut back to Jay Uso. He's still in the ring. Cody done left. He's waiting on Finn Balor to come out. Finn Balor, music hit. And Finn comes from the crowd and jumps Jay before the match even starts. Yay, man. Typical JD Judgment Day shit. I love it. I love it. I love the heel. Judgment Day runs raw. So they get to going into the match, and the match is actually pretty good. You know, it's Jay Uso versus Finn Balor. You know, it ain't going to be terrible. As the match is going on, Damian Priest looks on ominously. Ominously. At a monitor, ominous looking at the monitor. So we go for the finish. Miss Coup de Grasse, Spear, Uso Splash, Jay Uso gets the win. Damian Priest then confronts Jay Uso. We then get another follow camera angle, which I love the follow camera angles, man. I've been loving it. That's my favorite part of Raw. We get Jay leaving out the arena, the front door of the arena, and you see Sammy coming in. Sammy tells him as he's holding the IC title. This is the same building I first saw a wrestling show in. And this time he's back, only this time he's here as champion. Champion! Love it. We're in Montreal, Quebec, Canada. The crowd goes A for shit for Sami Zayn. I mean, they were really, really, really hyped for Sami Zayn, and rightfully so. Ronson then tells Gable, right before he's gonna go out the curtain, that the winner tonight will have to answer to Big Bronson Reed, brother. And so this match started to get technical. It started off technical. Then it gets really, 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 really fast paced. Gable does a little bit of high flying and starts targeting the ankle of Sami Zayn. Really, really targeting the ankle of Sami Zayn. I think at one point in time he had him like in like an ankle lock for like, I mean like two, three minutes. Uh, he's just targeting the ankle. And it makes sense. And it makes sense. Because without that ankle, Sammy can't hit the haluba kick and knock him the fuck out. So it makes sense. Three German suplexes from Gable. Then Sammy turns around and gives Gable his own German suplex. 
and let, man, drop some smack right on the back of his damn neck. It was so grotesque, so nasty, so damn cool, man. I loved every second of it. So a halluva kick reversed into an ankle lock. Sammy rolls out. Chad to the top rope. Caught power bomb. Sammy tries to sharpshoot him. Ankle goes out. Can't even lock the damn thing again. Drummer releasing to the turnbuckle from Gable. Tight, tight as ankle lock. But Sammy somehow finds a way to slip out. Explode a suplex right into the damn turnbuckle from Sammy. Sammy limps. Limps, man, limps into a halluva kick for the one, two, three to retain right in his hometown of Montreal, Quebec, Canada. It is beautiful. It is, it is picture perfect. It is everything you want to see. And then Gable gives Sammy Zane a suplex right in front of his wife. Shame on you, Gable. Shame, shame, shame. But seriously, though, that was bad, man. Gable. Train this man to take down Gunther. He takes down Gunther, the one thing your ass couldn't do, and then you get mad at him when he pins you again. If Gabe was tired of losing to Sammy, I'd be tired of it too, but I wouldn't wet one of my friends out for this man. Hat man, I mean, like, had him in a fucking weird ass, like, ankle lock in the middle of the damn rope on, on, on the top turnbuckle. Man, that shit. It, 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 was, it was bad, man. I didn't expect they would have turned. And that is your Monday Night Raw review. Make sure you check out our Friday Night Smackdown review coming out this Saturday. Make sure you stay tuned to all our videos here on Endo Productions. And, uh, yeah, man, Raw was good this week for once.